Dude, Luke, the printer's still busted. What the fuck, man? How's it going, everybody? Welcome to episode... Oh, shit. Six? Six? I think six. Sounds seven, seven. Six? It could be seven. Six? I think it's six. Return of the Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> Here, well, let's just really quick, let's just record you saying episode six, episode seven. You can go back and just loop over it with movie magic here, with podcast magic. Welcome to episode six. six. Welcome to episode seven of the Topless Robot Podcast. Today is... <laughs> I'm totally not going to edit that I either. It's just, today is October 21st, 2018. I, and the pause uh, made me th- think it kind of forgot the year there for a oh, second. Like, just, just, just 20, fuck. Um, <laughs> You're just uh, not prepared for this at all. Uh, but uh, you feel I live in the future where we, you and I will spend the rest of our lives. In the year 2000. <laughs> in the year 2000. I predict by the year 1972, we will have colonized the moon. <laughs> in the year 2000. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, there's news, I think from Lake from Lake I hope So it'd be kind of a weird week. <laughs> there was absolutely no news at all. Like nothing happened well, this week. Literally I mean, nothing. All the news has been political and it's fucking That's dumb. True. We, um, we had some Marvel news this week. Yeah, and I'm wondering the who's next. Is changing. Luke Cage has been canceled. Yep, Luke Cage. That's the second fist. one down. Yeah, we're half, half. Now, now it's just, it's just. Uh, so now it's Jessica Jones and and uh, and Daredevil and Daredevil, which <clears throat> arguably, probably they're. Oh, and Punisher. Oh, Punisher. Yeah, Punisher was really well received season one. Let's see if they can get a good season two. Arguably, out of it, the these are their most well received series. Are. I don't even think that's arguably. Luke Cage was really well received for half of that first season, and then after that, I was excited about Luke Cage, and then I got bored. It just. Uh, did you watch any? Are you, that's we've I talked did not about this. No, yeah. But basically, after they, you know, that mid se- first season, the mid middle of the first season, that was. <laughs> sick. <laughs> <laughs> No. Uh, Middle of the first season of Luke Cage it just kind of tapered off, and then season two is, was honestly hot garbage, in my opinion. But Oh, really? I did not like fresh, it. Hot garbage. Fresh, so fresh, hot, hot garbage. Hot garbage. Hot garbage. For some reason, I uh, uh, anytime Get someone garbage, prefixes you. something with hot, I think of that Dr. Tran animation. Yeah. <laughs> hot dickings <laughs> in a cup hickory smoked <laughs> yeah hic- hickory smoked horse buttholes <laughs> in a cup <laughs> dr tran <laughs> Man, hickory what smoke what <laughs> <laughs> making me feel so <laughs> <laughs> ancient <laughs> <laughs> you have chosen poorly <laughs> <laughs> oh man <laughs> oh man but- so um I am kind of sad to see that Luke Cage will not have an opportunity to see. Uh, I so I like the idea of the Defenders being this big, you know, mashup. And now, what does that? So, like, obviously, the next one on the on the chopping block has to be Defenders, right? I well, they did say the Iron Fist would be back in some kind of capacity that's not in the show. Right. I'm assuming oh. that Luke Cage would too. So maybe, th- I don't know if they'll do another season of the Defenders, but that could be where they what they're talking about. Oh. Iron Fist and Luke Cage will return in a bunch of cameos. Yeah, but right. I mean, or it's that. It probably, it, it, I would lean more towards that. They'll, they'll, they'll just show up and and uh, Jessica Jones and, and Lex Daredevil Lingo, going CW. forward, sure. but it, you know they didn't. They I haven't mean, officially said that that there's not going to be another Defenders, right? Unless I don't believe so. No, yeah, so. not that I recall. But I, I mean, I I would expect that that would be the one that's next on the chopping block because yeah. now we've got you know th- three, two. Three, well, three, three again. heroes that are going to be on on that. So it's like, eh, you know, is that going to be enough to carry that show? And uh, if uh, 
If not, then like you said, I mean, they did say that Iron Fist would be back in some capacity uh, in elsewhere, then maybe that's maybe. that is what that means. Which I'd be okay with because honestly, that was Danny's best was when he has other people to to bounce off of. He can't carry a show. He can't carry a show. Yeah. Like, I, again, I still will defend season two of Daredevil. I don't, or Daredevil, Iron Fist. Uh, I thought it was pretty decent. Uh, I had fun with it, and may, I don't. Th- and I don't think it was just because I had low expectations going in because I really didn't like season one. Season two felt. I, I've talked about it before, but season two actually felt pretty good. So I don't think. <sighs> it's just yeah. Uh, he even then, even then, it was more because of everyone else. He was sure. acceptable in that. It just he can't really. He, yeah, he can't. He can't carry a show by himself for sure. Mm. Yeah, that is. Uh uh unfortunate it is it's it's kind of weird uh kind of a little chink in the armor there for marvel although they've dominated so hard yeah but when it comes and tv universes well i wouldn't go that far when it comes to the tv universes as much as i disagree with this dc is is doing better in what they're producing that doesn't that's not to say that I think that the content they're producing is better, uh, but just the general consensus successful. seems to be that the content being produced in the DC television universe is better. Yeah, well, I mean, DC... I still disagree. But. I feel like for the most part, even, you know, s- stretching back to when we were when we were kiddos... Um, when we were but a lad! The Marvel, with the exception of the X-Men cartoon show... Um, a lot of the Marvel stuff, like, I remember the Iron Man TV show, like, the cartoon show that lasted for, like, a season or two, and, like, that's when everyone had, like, a Saturday morning cartoon, like, all these superheroes. Oh, sure. And all the DC ones are the ones that I, that, that really stand out. The DC like, cartoons were, were definitely the better. Adventures of, ba- yeah. of, of Batman and Robin, you have, um... Batman animated, Batman animated series, animated series. Justice oh, League, uh, Justice Teen League. Titans. The, even the Superman show was was uh, was good. The the one that came like I think right after Batman the animated series was over. Um, and it's just like they've consistently kind of TV. The well, TV Warner Brothers Batman animation Batman. had mm-hmm. like so that was when Warner Brothers animation was at its peak because that was around the time that they were seeing the success off of Animaniacs and Tiny Toon Adventures. Uh, and things like that and they're all a little loony batman the animated series like their animation department was top. fucking on top, top notch i mean we we i still watch them oh yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely still absolutely I, i'm currently batman beyond batman for fuck's sake like, like, yeah, cool. beyond when i was when i was Thank when you, i was Kevin younger Conway. i was like i saw batman i was like batman beyond wait batman in the future I don't know. That sounds kind of. Oh, wait a minute. Right. I, and <laughs> yeah. I had the same sort of feel where I was like, oh, they're taking oh, it digital that's a now. Shame. I, was, I was like, oh, they're going to take it digital now. Like, um, they're going to Mega Man Battle Network this shit. <laughs> but it was so cool. It was great. It was great. Kevin Conroy as old Bruce Wayne. Yep. And, and yep. you also bring back Mark Hamill for his reprise as a Joker. Yeah. And Terry the, was and a really good character. Yeah. I like Terry. Terry McGinnis. Yeah, Terry yep. McGinnis. Um, the uh and uh how in the future uh the jokers are a gang yeah yeah i thought i thought that was really well executed all that is on the dc uh, universe uh app have you Uh, been all the batman beyond the uh, batman animated series all that justice league all that great stuff. my dad has all of the batman the animated series on dvd that's how much he loved it's coming out on blu-ray soon (laughs) Yes. Ooh. With uh, Mask of the Phantasm and uh, Red Hood. Not to be confused with the Phantasm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if I am if I remember correctly, this Batman animated series box set includes, it's like 114 episodes. It's like, it's the whole series. Mm. Uh, and then it's Mask of the Phantasm and I think it was Red Hood, but I can't remember. Uh, and the deluxe edition also comes with like a Harley Quinn Funko or bobblehead or some mm. some it nonsense like that. Amazing! Yeah. And I want it. Yeah, yeah, I it, want it a lot. I'm very. Ex- it'll I give me. Like it'll give me some something, to, something to watch because I assume it's probably going to come out for the holiday season. Yeah, I can't remember. I actually think it's supposed to come out this month if it's not out already. Okay. Um, that'll give me something to watch after I'm done with Monty Python because now that's on Netflix. Are you watching yep. Flying Circus? Oh, oh yes. man. Oh yeah! This is an ex-parrot. 
<laughs> I'm glad I didn't say that one because that's the one that immediately came to mind. <laughs> this graph represents 23% of the population. And this graph <laughs> represents, <laughs> like, my favorite, one of my favorite sketches I, I've watched, like, three times. I watched it, like, I showed my, so I showed my dad because uh, he was never a fan. I was like, you have to watch this one. It's got Mr. Hilter in it. Um, it's the, the one where it's got like, like the local election and it's got, um, uh, I can't remember all of the names, but a bunch of the, you know, of the, the really bad guys from world war two, that are like hiding out in this like English town mm -hmm. and they're running for election. And it's like, they changed their names. So it's like Mr. Hilter and, um, and, and they're interviewing people, and he's like, well, you know, I don't know. I don't like the sound of these ear concentration bamps. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a bunch of, like, dorky World War II jokes, you know, yeah. like, that it feels a little too relevant now. Uh, no, that reminds <laughs> me of, um, uh, and I may have brought this up before. I'm, I'm pretty sure, I have brought up that Mitchell and Webb look before, uh, for the, when I referenced number wang, I think, in the first episode. <laughs> number wang. Um, number wang. But, uh, and after we record this podcast, I'm going to have to share, just show you guys some clips because it's amazing. Mm. Um, and, but they had this bit where, uh, they're like dressed up as Nazis and they're, it's during the war and everything. And, yeah. Oh. And he's like, uh, you know, it, it basically is all this, but why skulls? Yes. <laughs> yes. Are yes. we the baddies? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, we, I think I think we we watched that. Oh, did we? I, either either we watched that together, or I watched it very close to the one we very close to yeah, this. It's possible. Yeah, it's, it's possible. It's very funny. I don't yeah. remember us watching. Oh, it's, it's so fucking speaking, great. Speaking of by sketches, the way, the mm -hmm. Batman animated series Blu-ray pre-order ships on October thirtieth, according to okay, the so war. end of the oh, month. Very cool, and yeah. it includes a lot of cool things. Yeah, I'm like really excited but it's fairly expensive if i remember it's like 120 bucks something like yeah, that. 137 dollars and 90 cents but it comes with some batman shirt eh, and three uh funko dolls it looks like oh wow um it comes with batman batman and batman harley quinn harley quinn joker joker and batman no mr. batgirl mr freeze i'm joking it's batman okay of course <laughs> i was gonna say no. <laughs> of, of, of all the incarnations of Mr. Freeze, my favorite is the uh, is the Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, yeah. totally. <laughs> <laughs> Freeze! What killed the dinosaurs, <laughs> Batman? <laughs> Me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so bad. Uh, uh, no. Um. I uh, loved their take on Mr. Freeze, and I loved their. I loved the time that they gave to lesser known villains like the, oh, yeah. the clock master, the clock uh, guy who um, was obsessed with being on time and yeah. uh, just like one what? thing went off and he, and it sent him down. Like watching his whole story happen yeah. was amazing. They did that with, with a lot of those. Um, like you have uh, the, the, Mad, the, the Mad Hatter. Um, I've always like, loved oh, Clayface's yeah. Clayface, art. Clayface, Killer Croc. Um they even did, uh, what did they do? Uh, there was a cool episode that featured just like someone that the jo that owed the Joker a favor. I remember that. That yeah. one was good because, um, you know, he like, at the beginning of the episode, you he's know. He's just this squirrely like lawyer or yeah, something. Yeah, he, he's like a regular dude that happens to like, it, just cross paths with the Joker and yep. he's like, He's like, I'll let you live this time, but you owe me. Yep. And then years later, he comes back for it, and he's like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, dude, that was a great episode. Mm -hmm. There was so the much. The Ventriloquist was another one. The Ventriloquist was a good one. Yeah. I, liked, I, I liked that episode, or the episode that, that the, he was in. The, um, uh, the Grey was, Ghost. I was just going to say the Grey Ghost. With Adam West uh, yeah. as the voice. Oh, my God. that was. I'm getting goosebumps thinking about that episode, oh. and it hurts because I have a healing tattoo, so getting goosebumps actually stings. Okay, so let's just... <laughs> <laughs> whisper sweet nothings into Ryan's ear. That's not going to work. Oh, no. No. Uh, I no. I bet it will happen <laughs> if I put on the Wayne Newton cosplay. <laughs> <laughs> make it Roy Orbison. Uh, make it Roy Orbison. I'll grab the cling film and you've got a deal. <laughs> Dollar Dark <and> Shade. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Pretty uh, woman. <laughs> or some li Liberace tunes. <laughs> Speaking of Liberace, my my friend uh, showed me. I don't, I st I don't really didn't really watch a lot of SNL growing up. 
Uh, I've seen like you know the important sketches, but nothing like no, no, no the newer stuff. And he showed sure. me these because um, I'm a huge Vincent Price fan. And he showed me these uh, sketches they did where Bill Hader plays Vincent Price. In, really? Like, a hol- Have you guys not seen? That would them? be no. amazing. I want to see. They're this. so good. Bill the, Hader is so incredible. Bill Hader plays Vincent Price, and then it's like one of those like celebrity like Halloween TV specials from like the fifties. That would be amazing. And so it's a bunch of impersonations of um celebrities from the time like uh it, there's several of them as well you have Catherine Hepburn uh you make fun of Catherine Hepburn they make fun of Liber- Liberace a lot mm-hmm. uh Clark Gable um uh, James Franco shows up to play James Dean <laughs> sure um Fred Armisen plays Liberace and Ricky from uh, uh I Love Lucy <laughs> it's Lucy yeah it, it's so it's very funny um, you cannot be in the show. <laughs> yeah. And, and they also made fun of the Lawrence Welk show, which I did not know because uh, my grandparents really liked that show. They used to go like, we're going to bed after Lawrence Welk is on. <laughs> uh, and you know, it's, they're getting dri- you know, drifted off to sleep by his devilish champagne music, that it, the accordion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dating myself. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I had no idea that there was... Well, are you so- at least treating yourself well? Do you... Do I, you- Take yourself out to dinner? And- uh, sometimes I do, but... Uh, do you pick up Mostly the whole I call myself to say that I'm going to be busy and I have to cancel. <laughs> <laughs> do you at least pick up the whole check when you eat out? Uh, sometimes I go to the bathroom and, uh, you know, get out the window. <laughs> and, and, I let my, and, and, and I let myself cover myself. So. <laughs> uh you know, I, I really love myself. Uh, I guess that's the only reason why I stick around. <laughs> <laughs> it just makes me think of uh, uh, Tom Waits bit on uh, uh, Nighthawks at the Diner. Oh, oh, he's I- like, you know, I, I, I've been been around. I've been there making the scene with the magazine. You know, sometimes you gotta, you gotta treat yourself right. You gotta, Take yourself out, you know, and, and and you get home, you put on put on a smooth record, and you know, kind of looking into my eyes a little creepily as you're saying <laughs> that. It's making me a little uncomfortable. It's okay. At the stroke of midnight every night, Tom Waits turns back into the pile of uh, of rats, crows, and, <laughs> and, and, ho- and hobo tears that the witch cursed a hundred years ago. I fucking love Tom Waits. So why? <laughs> Oh, man. He's got such great quotes as, I'd rather have a bottle in front of me than a frontal lobotomy. That sounds like sage wisdom. It yeah. does. It does. Uh, I mean, I, I there's a lot, lot of th- things I'd rather have in front of me than a frontal lobotomy. <laughs> but um, it is sage advice. Another one of his is, uh, there is no devil, it's just God when he drinks. You know, I, I, I like that quote <laughs> that a lot. That one's actually really I like that quote a lot. <laughs> I like a that. Lo- I like it. A lot. A lot. No. 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 I I don't get on board with those quotes that are like <laughs> you're going so far back, <laughs> and you know, 20 years ago that was record that was you know everyone was repeating that quote. It's it's the wazaps <laughs> of you know dumb movies and. Oh. So what you're saying is I should bring back what's up. No. I'm so what you're saying is we, we, should, we should bring back Rosebud. <laughs> <laughs> if we're going to go back, we must go all the way. <laughs> Rosebud. <laughs> I'm going to start every podcast from here on out. Just with yell that. Rosebud all the time. Rosebud! Rosebud! <laughs> Rosebud! <laughs> <laughs> Rosebud! <laughs> Rosebud! <laughs> I'm sure that Orson Welles... You know, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure that if we... Orson Welles just sped up his applause. <laughs> I, I'm sure that we could find a way to maximize, you know, trampling on as many graves as possible, to harness turbine power from the spinning bodies <laughs> and power the, state of, power the city of Los Angeles. They are spinning in their graves. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Respect. <laughs> Talk about clean energy right there. <laughs> I think we might be onto something. Let's just uh, make bad jokes all day and we have now save hooked the up the Orson's, Orson's body to the <laughs> to the oil rig and it's now drilling deep into the earth. <laughs> <laughs> 
Let the fracking begin. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, wow. So, just kind of scrolling through, something that I missed is Lobo. I forgot about the Krypton TV show. That I didn't doing. know that there was a Krypton TV mm. show. Oh, Lobo. Uh, that's the uh, the um, that's the guy who's. Oh, that's right. He loves like nothing in the universe but like these space dolphins. It's like a weird thing. Lobo I mean, is DC's Deadpool. Yeah. Doesn't like, he look like he's, he's like, not fourth wall breaking? He looks like if, if, if Lemmy was uh, was a juggalo. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly what he looks like in, in this particular image. He's missing the cocoa puff on his cheek, though. <laughs> well, he, he ate it. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, how to play the game. You know. <laughs> So Krypton uh, is a show that's currently going on. Is this a yes. thing that I've missed? Yes. I was searching for Krypton. Oh, okay, good. It does find me the TV show. So how the fuck did sci-fi get a DC property? Well, they, they were able to get the rights for CG Marlon Brando. And, you know, like, and they're just, they're just going to recycle the, the, the Krypton scenes from the, the uh, 70s Superman movie. <laughs> <laughs> and stretch it out. My son. <laughs> yeah, I wish I had. Kal-El, son of jor kneel before Zod. <laughs> that just, and then I have to follow it up in my head with uh, mall rats. Snoochie boochies. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. So it premiered this year in March. Yeah. Uh, I, for I forgot that it existed. To I'll have honest. to take a look at that. I what heard it. I, I remember hearing when it came out, like the first few episodes, people were like, eh, it's okay. Huh. That's pretty much the collective internet. It was just like, yeah. Hey, David Goyer, I know that name. The last son of Krypton. He, oh, his screenwriting works include the Blade trilogy, Nolan's uh, Dark Knight trilogy, Dark City, which is a fucking amazing movie. I do love movie. Dark City. Man of Steel, which I could give many shits less for, or many shits. It would be possible. The only possibility is for me to give shit more shits than I currently am presently giving for the current iteration of Superman movies. Did I did I take too long to explain yeah, there was how a, little I care? A little bit. Apparently, but it, I care enough to explain that much. But it gave me enough time to to re recall that I was miffed that they've never used that John Williams Superman theme. Uh, in, what the in, bum, 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 yeah, bum, the good one, bum, 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 bum. you know the one they also use in the Goonies. Bum, for like bum, a bum, second bum, 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 bum. oh Whoa. man i really blew that out sorry about Jesus. that bum, 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 good bum, lord if you bum, weren't bum, bum, awake bum, before <laughs> <laughs> when you were listening be, to this now i gotta be are. a little more a little more careful with this new uh this new audio See, interface the thing that disappointed me most about man of steel which is now like six years old or whatever now how long is it how long uh, did that come out? it was a while ago I don't know. Maybe if you keep increasing the maybe I'll start to remember. Really get it. I was just disappointed that Michael Shannon was not like I love Michael Shannon so much. He is way cool. Michael Shannon is very cool. He is one of my favorite actors. Twenty thirteen. And they misused him. And, and I was close. I was only off by a year. And to bring up the Superman theme song again, Michael Shannon. God. Damn it! <laughs> you know, it's funny. I just made this correlation. Okay, go on. Michael Shannon was in Man of Steel, mm -hmm. right? And his. Oh, I you were gonna stop. That's where you're gonna stop. Yeah. Michael Shannon. I was just in made Man this correlation. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Shannon was was in Man of Steel, and his corpse was was featured in Batman uh, Batman v Supes. Um, but he was also in a movie that used the Superman theme song by Warner Brothers. Um. Uh, he was in Kangaroo Jack as like the henchman. Oh, yeah, oh he my was. God, chicken blood. That's right. That's right. So was Christopher. Hey, Walken. kid, go long. <laughs> <laughs> he was. I, I remember Kangaroo Jack being a thing. I I don't think I've ever seen it. That's why I, I my guilty pleasures. I loved that movie as a kid. I watched really? it because we had oh, yeah. it, and it was just like, well, it's got the guy that played Quinn and Sliders in it, so I have to watch it because I was does? a huge mm -hmm. Sliders fan. Jerry O'Connell, yeah, Jerry O'Connell's yeah. in it. Because uh, I, oh, I'm a Anthony huge Anderson's Sliders fan. My first email address was based on the second episode of the show. I think it was the second episode, maybe the first. The Patient Zero episode where they... No, so I think I, it was, that was the second, second episode. Yeah, second episode. The Patient Zero episode. When was, he is the one who mm -hmm. unleashed this. And he's, it's... Well, uh, he's a biologist in And this what world. ends up solving it is uh, fucking Gimli makes penicillin. <laughs> <Yeah>. Gimli. 
<laughs> I think he means Sala. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I actually finally just started watching that show for like sliders the first time. Yeah. Really? It's it's way rad. Man, I loved that show I, so much. Slider. It's yeah. really good. It is it's, it's a little extremely dated. good. It's a little dated. It is a little dated but for it's sure. Still good. It's it still is a great But as great a kid show. I could I could impress uh, adults by saying the uh Einstein Rosenthal Podansky Bridge. <laughs> that was the plot device of the movie. Um, and then when the Cro-Mag started showing up in the later seasons, that's when I kind of was like, oh, okay. Yeah, now all of a sudden we've got a persistent villain who's traveling. Yeah, and, and then they, they, and... they took one of the main characters that quit the show and they turned her into another thing for like a couple episodes. And then yeah, uh, and then I think Trey O'Connell stopped being in the show and like his brother... Or something like that took over. I yeah, a dude who looks remarkably like him, and they were on the show simultaneously for a time. Oh, right, right, right. Um, but uh, another show that I love that people tend to forget about that is in that same sort of fandom vein is the Weather Channel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> You know, the Weather Channel's <laughs> visual effects game is a like is fucking really startlingly good right now. Uh, no, it's um, Farscape. Another um, show that my, I only just my started mother watching. loves Netflix. Farscape. Farscape was amazing. The all of the puppets were Henson Creature Shop, mm -hmm. uh, and it was just so so good. And now we can talk shit about Babylon 5. I never watched Babylon 5. I, I, I watched it a little bit, and I was like, this is not Star Trek. <laughs> I'm going to go back to Star Trek. I think that's when like Voyager was still on. So uh, I we, tried to watch Voyager. when I watched the um, premiere when it, when it first aired mm. and tried to watch it while it was airing and eh, didn't really get into it. I have seen every Star Trek movie in theaters since Generations. Holy crap. I have seen every Star Trek TV show with the exception of Discovery because it's a flaming pile <laughs> of shit. Um, I, I, I awkwardly uh, met Brent Spiner at a Star Trek convention that my family went to. Uh, which also featured other people that weren't. There's always like in the the side hall where they have the the B and below tier actors that are just like I was in an episode of Star Trek and I also do this. Yeah, and you had Richard the the Sam Rockwell in uh, yeah in yeah. Uh, uh, Galaxy Quest. Galaxy Quest. Yeah, uh, the guy. Sam Rockwells. Yeah. So I got to meet um, Galaxy Quest Richard so Hatch, who played Apollo from the original Battlestar Galactica, and I'm pretty sure this was like right before he died. Uh, and I'm pretty sure he was he was really he was high as balls and like hit, hitting on my mom and I'm just like I should be upset that this someone is hitting on my mom right now but it's also the guy whose face I slept on for because <laughs> I had Battlestar Galactica sheets I still have my Battlestar blanket okay and then I met Jaws from uh, from James Bond before he died and uh, I, I forget where I was going with this I got to meet Edward James uh, almost speaking of Battlestar Galactica. Mm -hmm. I would have been more excited to meet him and talk about Blade Runner. I would be yes. more excited to I actually meet to him and talk about that teacher movie that he did. Stand and Deliver. Stand and Deliver. I love uh. that movie. Uh, so, fun story. My uh, One of my exes, her mom was in the class that that movie was based on. I remember you telling me about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And, and I, I even heard that her mom went to college. She did. <laughs> <laughs> Your, Your mom, mom went, went to, to college. college. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she she was like they came in and interviewed. Apparently, they like combined multiple students into like one uh, the focal point students for that they you know focused oh, on. Oh yes, like any good body horror movie, they combine. They combine. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they just human sent to beat it. Put them it in the merge machine. <laughs> <laughs> Canada! <laughs> and, and then lots of bubbling flesh and, and oh man it's great yeah i always thought that was kind of a cool story I was like oh hey that, that is, is cool pretty story. rad but my 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 dad accidentally scared robert picardo uh who played the emh in voyager and also did yeah. some stargate stuff how did he accidentally uh, scare him so uh was one of them on the way out of the bathroom and the no. other one was on the way in at the same time and they just opened the doors. Oh, Jesus Christ. Whew. Okay. Okay. 
<laughs> no, we, we were so we were at the Hilton in Vegas in like 2011. This was before the Star Trek experience closed there. Sad. Um, but they had a, like a replica of like um, Quark's bar from Deep Space Nine. And so they had, we, we were just sitting, we were eating because we were at the con and we were just taking a break. And uh, they had like this little cordoned off section for like if somebody important was there to like eat without being bothered. Sure. So Robert Ricardo was there and he was wearing a beer nuts hat, um, you know, as because his his baldness uh, was... Uh, character is uh, he it was a dead giveaway if you saw him like down the street and you're like i know that forehead anywhere uh, <laughs> and uh, besides trail of the screaming forehead um oh no um but uh he was sitting eating we were sitting eating my dad is a big dude um and he looks kind of scary and so my dad was sitting um in a way in which they were could both make eye contact with each other and my dad recognized who he was so he looked at him a couple of times just as you do and so my dad gets up to go to the bathroom like very suddenly mm -hmm. and then he just kind of like uh like spazzes out like not spazzes out but just kind of like that moment when you think that someone's coming for you <laughs> you know especially it's like a, a big dude like my dad just like, huh, and uh, don't hurt me, please. And, and that is the story of how my my dad may or may not have uh, made Robert Picardo pee himself a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is uh, so how many how many of those do we have? How many what voicemails? I mean, one. It's I know whose voicemail that is. It's not mine. But I got I got someone to do it. Okay, we got uh, a voicemail. We did get we a voicemail. Did? Oh my but goodness! I have not listened to it. I told him yesterday at, at the wedding. I was like, I'm not, I'm, I cannot wait to to listen to what you had to say because my friend is an eccentric fellow. I noticed that it was a local area code. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, my friend, uh, uh, one of my closest friends, uh, Adriana. Uh, texted me something totally unrelated that uh she's like can i should i show up at this time or this time and i'm like you're in illinois you can show up whenever you want like it would be great to see you but you know i knew that she meant for it for it to send it to someone else and she was like oh whoops uh i did mean to tell you though that i'm gonna call and leave a voicemail which she didn't so oh. boo Brad see Brad. that was a long and windy road of a story to disappointment yep, yep. yeah <laughs> that's the way i roll you just keep everyone listening until they they're sad. Is that pretty much? Yeah, pretty much, much how things go. Oh no! So, um, uh, this is a landmark moment. It is. I posted a prompt on the Facebook page, uh, so people basically, I was like, "Look, all right, let's let's give someone uh, a reason to call in." So, like, if you um, have, uh, if you want any poor poorly qualified advice on literally anything just call leave a voicemail and get you know advice from three dudes who have no fucking <laughs> idea what you're talking about have you tried turning it off and on again you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I i was not that specific so i have no idea what's, uh, what's on the other line here okay so this is the only voicemail that we did receive all right <laughs> son of a bitch is that a toilet? That is a toilet. <laughs> no, wait. 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 There it is. <laughs> you son of a bitch. So, uh... Thank you, dear thank listener. Thank you, uh, <laughs> listener, for uh, uh, submitting your question and advice. Uh, my advice would be... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Drano, maybe? I mean, it doesn't really sound like there are any problems with your pipes. That, that actually sounded like a very healthy uh, plumbing system. Although, I can't tell if it's a, one of those efficiency toilets or not, so... Yeah, I, I, I suppose, in that case, my, my advice uh, would be to get an efficiency toilet, because it sounds like you wasted a significant amount of water on that <laughs> yeah, call. Yeah, that was not low flow. Whatsoever. Yeah, no, that was so, very... Uh, see, you are... That was, that was what they call heavy flow. That was heavy flow. <laughs> 
that. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I want to like, I want to call him out so bad now and just be like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you, you, I know who you are. It's like that, uh, that, very that, uh, that SNL sketch with Chris Farley with the coffee, the, the decaf coffee one where he's like, you, have you guys seen that? No. Mm-mm. Oh my. It, it's really, so it's like a, there's, there, it's like a behind the scenes of those like gotcha, uh, like, you were actually trying this food product uh oh yeah, commercials, yeah, yeah and he's just like he freaks out it's like <laughs> us, it's, it's it's a slow burn he's just like you son of a bitch <laughs> <laughs> you goddamn son of a bitch <laughs> and then he just like breaks the coffee and flips the table and just like starts beating this waiter it, it's <laughs> it's so good it's so good but i want So what you're that. saying is you want to physically maim your friend for leaving that voicemail no it it was wonderful and and, uh is it someone i know uh, i don't think so okay um he's uh i play D &D with him every week okay He's he's one of my D and D crew. I actually met him in fencing in my in my fencing class. Ooh, fencing! That's that's Fancy. yeah. That's offensive. <laughs> yes, fencing or and he sticks the landing. <laughs> the Russian judges give him a seven point eight. Of course they do. Yeah. Fucking Russian. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, I'm uh, I am going to get him. <laughs> uh, I'm going so, to get him. He has a very uh, particular you, set of skills. <laughs> um, if you have any uh, questions, comments, or uh, flushes to send our way, uh, maybe hashtag should, only toilet we reactions. Should, <laughs> we should, we should. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ryan's broken. <laughs> <laughs> the we should. <laughs> <laughs> we should we should just have a segment of the podcast where we review toilets. <laughs> you know, I've always been been more of a fan of the older ones. That, uh, actually, talking about toilets, I was friends with a guy uh, who intentionally got the least efficient toilets in his house. Why? Because he he basically wanted a turbocharged toilet so he wouldn't have to flush. Toilets. So what you're telling me is you're friends with Tim Allen. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Uh, uh, that's not good for uh no actually i'm not no, uh, <laughs> unfortunately the, oh, my our friend is no longer with us oh uh, he but he did inter- oh, oh, oh. He, he did introduce me to the wonders of of low efficiency toilets <laughs> and and one of the greatest movies i've got a jet turbine I've in this scene that's what it felt like it was it, it was just like it just felt like so when you, you might like when you went to the when you courtesy flush you're just like <laughs> yeah, you don't have to courtesy flush. It basically <laughs> sounded like when you were in an airplane and take t- and we used the restroom on the airplane. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I uh, he, his toilet was wonderful, and it introduced me to such screen classics like Trail of the Screaming Forehead. Okay, which features the going back to UHF features the bad guy from UHF as in a small bit part. That guy is in everything. I know. Uh, he's like the living embodiment of uh, the Waldorf. Yeah, totally. Of Waldorf, yeah. Yeah, Statler and Waldorf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I'm not going to lie, my head was really stuck on toilet still, and I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Get your brain <laughs> oh, out of the gutter. we're on movies now. Jesus, my brain took way too long to catch up there. Well, that movie belongs in the toilet, so you were almost there. <laughs> oh. So uh, we have come once again to that time. Um. <laughs> So if if you do have anything, any comments that uh, you want to make, anything uh, that you you want us to play on the podcast, give us a call at 805-222-6287, and we will play it on the podcast and chastise you. We or should just rate your toilets. We'll just, or just rate your toilets. We should come up with a very complicated toilet rating Number one system. to toilet. One to toilet. One to toilet. From a scale of Kohler to a uh, generic rest stop toilet, I would place it probably at a Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe even for those regional viewers, a Menards. You know, judging judging by the flush, it sounds like it's got some decent flow. The only concern that I have is if it has one of the nice little squishy seats that make me feel so comfortable and home, like yeah. I'm at my grandma's house and thank you for listening to ryan's royal flush
<laughs> this, this has been another edition of Ryan's Royal Flush. Thank you for listening. <laughs> and flush on. You know, you so perfectly embodied the, the, the voice of someone who would review toilets. <laughs> like, that's exactly... Not, not a very fast speaker. You don't, you're don't. you not going to get someone like, so this toilet, it flushes so well, and you know what? When my butt is on that seat, I feel like I'm kneeling and looking into God's eyes. <laughs> You're not going to get that. It's gonna Welcome be... to another second episode of Harry's Hot Seat. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you got those on. <laughs> we didn't plan this. That's just... <laughs> it, no, I just... It's, it's going to be the guy who's going to be like, so uh, this is going to be your typical 10-gallon reservoir I've tank. I've been in the industry for 25 years as a contractor <laughs> uh, in Haddonfield, Illinois, and I have to, to say that I'm very proud to uh, endorse American-made toilet uh, this election season. <laughs> uh, so, rants, uh, gentlemen. Hmm. You know, I have yet to go on a nerd rant. You have, you have yet. I, I've been, I've been, been cooking uh, on on some things here. Uh, I can smell what the Brooks is cooking. Can you smell what the Brooks is cooking? Can you do the eyebrow? Can you do the eyebrow? Hmm. <laughs> wait, wait. There, oh, we, there we go. go. That's perfect. <laughs> Just get some tape and stick it there. <laughs> Can you smell what the Brooks is Brooks cooking? <laughs> Brooks is Brooks. And <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what do you got for us? Uh. One fuck! Now I, I just kind you of took like... the wind out of his sails, Brian. <laughs> no, See I, what look, you've I'm done? sorry to make you happy I, I, I was, and forget was, about all of your pain. I, I, I was gonna go on a a, 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 a something about D and D, but uh, now I just kind of lost uh, lost lost the wind there. Let me wait, wait, wait. Be the wind beneath his wait. wings, Ryan. Not uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna go into Mega Man rant because there, uh, there's nothing to say besides. Um, that and uh, <laughs> dark, dark tower, dark tower, dark tower. Uh, the dark tower. <clears throat> <clears throat> Welcome by Brooks. I fucking hate the dark tower movie. It was so bad and shameful and bad. And it's like they didn't even, well, it's like they almost read the source material. Um, and like, I get what they're trying, they're, they're going for because it's, it's a lot to cover and. If I had it my way, it would just be a series of mini series. A uh, uh, I don't get why it wasn't but exactly like I mean, considering the format that the books were written in, yeah. it's what twelve books. It's uh, s technically seven. Okay. Uh, wait, seven? Am I? I thought. Am, am I? Oh, okay. We have the Gunslinger. We have the Drawing of the Three. We have. Brooks is googling it because he's a bad Dark Tower fan. <laughs> I, I just haven't had. Uh, for a little while, everyone I was living with was in the middle of their first run of the Dark Tower, and um, and it was exciting and wonderful to be in a house full of people that were it was all not exciting nine. and new. Nine? I was close. Uh, I said oh, ten. But. Oh, nine. Yeah, nine. With uh, uh, Wind to the Keyhole being the the kind of middle ground between the yes. the flashback book, which uh, Wizard in Glass, and Wolves of the Kalo. Which featured uh, Callahan from uh, Salem's Lot, but yeah, uh, I I wish that I wish that it took off and was good, so more people would read it because there are so many good books out there. And for those of you listening, uh, if you haven't picked up a book in a while, fucking do it because books are fucking rad. And I think more people need to read. Uh, because we're gonna run out of reboots. Read a book. Soon. Read a book. Read a, read a motherfucking book. book. Okay, go to your fucking library. Except for me, because of a personal beef with the City of Chandler Library, <laughs> because I returned those goddamn DVDs a decade ago. Okay, they didn't check them in. They wanted a hundred dollars, and you know I will not stand for this because I, I because the dude the, does not abide. The Brooks does not abide, and so Chandler, uh, ch the Chandler Public Library system. You know where I live now. Okay. Let's let's hash it out, okay? I'll do some volunteer time, but I'm not paying a hundred fucking dollars. It's yeah, right. high noon. So go read a book, so you can be angry that that Hollywood is is uh, making bland editions of the things that you like. So that way, I cannot be as angry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I uh, to piggyback on yours a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, feel the same about uh, desperation 
and about uh. Uh, and about uh, Dreamcatcher. Ah! Desperation was made into a made-for-TV movie. Like I think it mm-hmm. was made for sci-fi, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I, I believe so. And it was terrible. It was awful. The book was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, uh, Dreamcatcher, we've all seen Dreamcatcher. Uh, the book was outstanding. Uh, Dream honestly, the movie wasn't terrible, mm. but it was it it was removed from the source yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I'm honestly excited about. Um, I liked it. I like the newest uh, car- incarnation. I feel very it. good about the newest and incarnation. I am I am pumped about that. Uh, I liked gerald's game that netflix got i never finished that uh that one was good that one's just terrifying i mean like the, the concept for the me is i've just been like oh gee what would i do if i am handcuffed to a bed and it was gonna be sexy time and now it's now it's demon time yeah uh what do you do uh that in 1922 was really good that like novella thing he did yeah uh i s- have started to watch that hulu series uh the, several times the one with james oh, Frank- Frank- oh, Frank- yeah. fraggle rock no, no, no. That's Castle Rock. I mean the 22 series. Oh. Uh, with James Franco. It's pretty good. Because um, no, at least I think I that's really we're talking about the same look. thing. Where he oh, uh, just goes a movie. into a time portal to go. Oh, no. That's uh, that's uh, uh, 11 63 Yeah. Yes. Uh, that so is that's a, what I thought you were talking about with 22. That is an excellent book as well. Um, um, no, uh, 1922 was a nove- uh, I forget the name of the story. I think it might be the same story. It was a novella that Stephen King wrote in one of oh, his okay. anthologies about this guy that like kills his wife, and it's just it's really really dramatic and cool and good. And I wish that I hope they keep doing Stephen King stuff because I I, I think they're doing Firestarter again, um, and they're doing Pet Cemetery and Pet Cemetery. <laughs> uh, I'm I am waiting for them to. To do one of the other, you know, one of the other bigger properties like Salem's Lot. Sure. Because I really, really want a Salem's Lot movie. It's going to, um, and maybe do The Stand again, I guess. I think The Stand, uh, deserves, uh, stand a, uh, in the place where you live. Now face north. Yeah. Think um, about erections once. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder why you have one now. <laughs> <laughs> On that note. We're done. That's it. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye bye. What's up? Rosebud. Rosebud. <laughs> 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 uh, bye guys.